Now, I'm a serial animal toucher. I was the first veterinarian hired by the Bronx Zoo uh, as their field veterinarian, and during my early career, I grew tired of treating wild animals for the same preventable diseases over and over again, and the best thing I could do for animal health was to protect their habitat. Now, the Bronx Zoo is based in New York, and you could say a lot has changed in the past 500 years on the island once known as Manahata. Here you can see the great Mohegan River, otherwise known as the Hudson, surrounding a landscape completely transformed. And when I think about New Yorkers' perspective on landscape, I am drawn to the famous New Yorker magazine cover of artist Saul Steinberg, which I believe beautifully captures a local's grasp of place and sense of geography. From the minute detail of the neighborhood to some broad concepts of life beyond New Jersey. Like New York, our entire planet is undergoing change. The ecology of the planet is undergoing a state shift, putting the health of the planet at risk for us and nature. Politicos talk about regime change in the Middle East, but it is those ecological conditions, those ecological regime change we are facing. Through our cumulative actions from climate change to habitat loss, the very processes that sustain nature are being undermined. In my lifetime, the population has doubled, and most of us now reside in cities embedded in growing urban landscapes like this one in Mexico. We are transforming the earth in a wholesale fashion. We are entering the age of megacities where separate cities are suburbs of other cities. We like to talk about sustainable greener cities, yet the urban metabolism of these megacities reach well beyond their landscapes, which residents perceive like the myopic New Yorker cover. Now, I'm not a city person. Since my early years working in Glacier National Park, two things have receded. The glaciers on my left and my Donald Trump hair on the right. <laughs> I never thought that geologic time could be viewed in my lifetime. The earth is balding. This is a th threshold change. So what's the solution? National parks have been labeled America's greatest ideas. But when you look at Yellowstone, you see inside the box thinking. And much of the conservation since its founding has focused on what it's called pattern approach to conservation, or postage stamp here. But when you think like a box, you manage land like a box, as exemplified by the checkerboard railroad land legacy across the West. Is this really how nature functions? Animals migrate across landscapes, not postage stamps. We need to conserve processes. We're in the age of process conservation. Nature works because its systems, functions, its systems function together. Our bodies cannot function without a circulatory, nervous, or digestive system, and neither can nature's, but that's the way we approach conservation. 21st century conservation is where pattern and process meet, and this happens at the large landscape scale. As the threats to nature are large scale, our response to these threats should equally be so. Conservation happens across all lands and waters, connecting wildland, rural, urban communities, and our own backyards as one whole system. I helped co-founded one of the largest First, one of the first largest landscape efforts in the world, the Yellowstone to Yukon Initiative, two decades ago. A conservation collaborative that spawned a global movement on conserving nature, not just in parks, but between parks and wildland areas. Today, there are at least 300 large landscape efforts across North America, which can be viewed like t-shirt sizes from small in New England, medium in the Southeast, extra, extra, extra large in the Canadian boreal forest, but they all have one thing in common. They don't talk to each other. They don't talk to each other, and I can't talk. The question is, how do we scale our human response to the scale that nature functions? We need a social movement for conservation, and that includes you. Large bottom-up conservation efforts are emerging around the globe as local conservation efforts recognize that they cannot solve these challenges without landscape neighbors. Large-scale conservation is growing because social technology has facilitated this change. Network communications, network science, governance, and society are changing the way we define problems 
connect human capital, and create solutions. We are helping Patagonia Company do a, an inventory of this new enthusiasm for large-scale conservation. There are over 150 nonprofit-led large-scale landscape efforts and seascape efforts around the world. And we hope to connect this community of practice and their constituencies. People and nature are inextricably linked. Last year, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the 1964 Wilderness Act and Civil Rights Act. These two landmark pieces of legislation represent parallel but connected tracks of how we shall save this planet. A fine harmony must exist between human and environmental needs. With the nature destroyed, it becomes a civil rights issue. Otherwise, the earth is being squeezed like a vice. Large-scale conservation is a holistic response that increases the operating space for nature and humanity to, th to thrive. The next 100 years is the bottleneck century for the planet. 100 years represents one lifetime for a baby girl born in the US, and that's one out of three chance today. We have to save as much nature as we can, change the trajectory of human population and consumption, decrease carbon, and put ourselves on a glide path for sustainability. We all need to be planet doctors. We need to take conservation as seriously as we manage our own health. We can't outsource conservation to others. And while we can't work in every landscape, we can save the planet by connecting one large landscape at a time. Thank you.